What is up, everybody? This is Tikoi, also known as Richard, and I'm coming back to you for the first video of the new season of um, Age of Empires 4. And you know, it's been it's been an interesting, interesting ride. Um, I actually thought I would go for something like the English. Uh, I was really excited about them. I was also excited about the Rus, a um, few other factions, and also understanding the whole new siege. So I played a few custom or, or quick matches rather before I started jumping into rank. Um, we're already sitting at platinum one for the season. Um, you know, we've had some really, really good games, and it's been so much fun. I have, I've been having so, so, so much fun. Uh, but before we, we talk about all of that, let's tell you guys why you are here. Um, firstly, we're going to be jumping and discussing everything, everything, everything about the Holy Roman Empire right now. And exactly what you can expect, the way they're being played, the way you, your strengths are going to be working in your favor, how to counter different factions, English, French, Chinese, Abbasid Dynasty, all of the different factions, Delhi Sultanate, and where your strengths lie with the new extremely, extremely fun Holy Roman Empire. So um, we're going to firstly start off with a... Um, game like the Rus here um, and most of these players that we're playing against they um, actually are, are pretty high leveled um, you know they were most of them were quite tough matches I'm not gonna lie there wasn't there's some matches where I could get away with with quite quite quick and easy victories but I want to show you how you can get consistently into the causal age uh, without um, you know dying every single time you go for a, a, um, a fast castle play because we've been getting those castle ages um i don't want why the, why the graphs are not here that's unfortunate oh there we go um you can see we've been getting those 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 castle ages just over the seven and a half minute mark uh for most games so let me let's let's quickly start going into that i must just give you guys a heads up the the team that i have struggled with uh, the most against would be a uh, holy roman empire mirror match um or the french that's that's the two that that's been giving me the hardest time but we have um won some of those games as well and i think it's map dependent so i um changed my map preference actually on the rank letter let's just hop on there um so i don't want dry arabia i don't want a high view and i actually don't want king of the hill the problem with king of the hill is there's just a single sacred site and i have had games where you get imperial age in under 15 minutes and you are booming with 6,000 resources per minute just insane amount of resources but you can't train units fast enough because you went for regiments instead of um arkan chapel um uh, is it regiments arkan chapel look at me being a, a, a noob again um you know i'm 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 middle class i'm not <laughs> i'm not up there burgrave burgrave and residents that's where the big topic is and discussions are happening right now so as far as i understand the residents works like all other factions now but you get that buff that you can um, place relics um inside they get an extra 100 gold as far as i know so it's not it's not the 600 for three relics yet you used to get it's 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 a lot less um but we'll we'll look at that because most games I've been going into five or six relics um, as we're going into things. Uh, sorry for the long intro, guys, but let's let's quickly hop into some games here and um, start explaining everything. I'm gonna jump into four or five m matches straight off the bat, so you guys can see. Um, I'm gonna play around with timestamps on the video so I can learn how to do that. I have never done that, so we can talk about every single faction that we're gonna play against. Okay, so let's start start off with um this we start we'll start at the top and work our way down okay um this was a quick match let's start here this is going to be french uh, sorry holy roman empire versus chinese now the chinese players um these days they are either going to go for a double town center or song dynasty boom so they want to play into the late game and that's the thing with the Holy Roman Empire. When you start deciding to play into the late game, there's a certain aspect of what you need to understand. And uh, one of the things that's probably the best map for Holy Roman Empire right now is going to be Altai. If you get Altai, there's a very, very high t chance that you're going to have a lot of success. And um, 
I'll show you guys what I mean. So this is the strategy I've been using. Um, so you start off with your four villagers on, so double scout, that's first scout there, second scout there. Uh, we can see we are playing against um, Dark Raven here. So he's going for the deer straight off the bat and single scout opening for him. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty fun. So the, the, the way this works, right? You want to micro your prelate. So that's going to be one of your first things to do. So this is how I usually start. First scout on keybind one, second scout on keybind three. Uh, town hall is always H keybind two, prelate four, right? So I can, I can micro my, um, my start of my game very very effectively uh without any any loss of training time or anything like that which i do have here as you can see um so there's a lot to do in the beginning of the game we we lost about five seconds there on the villager training time but that's not the the difficult part right here so you want to get depending on the team let's say you're going against french you know you're going to get raided you need early gold for your um Cosolate, right? And to get your men at arms out and to get those upgrades out. So you want to aim for around 900 gold in the castle age and you're going to have to play in a certain way to get those type of benchmarks out. So we go for four because China is uh, a more passive um, civilization rather. Um, and the one thing that you want to do, and I'll show you guys that in the other game, is just gauge your opponent. So you can see right here, we're picking up a lot of sheep. We're coming back. We actually spot out these two sheep. We're going to do a little turn around the waypoint there, like a sailboat. <laughs> but yeah, we get a lot of sheep here. We actually see him coming back uh, on the map. Um, only with that single scout, so that that's also in our favor. Uh, you need about eight sheep. Eight, eight. I would say is is the ballpark of a good run. Um, getting you over into Castle Age, having safe food to fall back on, and you'll see what I do now. I'll I'll start killing the deer um, around the close regions because you put the uh, uh, Arkan, sorry, the Arkan Chapel on top of the deer on this map because it's close to your town center. Um, it's in that. Uh, radius of your uh, emergency repairs and then you have this beautiful deer right underneath the town center and this is going to be the quickest way you're going to get into um, your castle age this sheep doesn't even matter anymore so you need three basically to start off with but now you can see i have that 220 gold uh, that i needed for um the food here and instead of going uh, and keeping them on the gold I switch over to the sheep and then I rally onto the gold so I can continue um, you know working away at that food goal which is going to be uh, getting to um, the 1200 food and the 600 gold that's that's the that's the goal and you should be able to get that at least at six minutes 30 to seven and a half minutes that's your that's your window that you need to get this strategy right on right you can see the villagers coming around here i spotted out with my scout so we know these villagers are planning a little right uh, 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 barbican of the sun push here so he did it he did it with four villagers and i did not even finish my uh, arkham chapel i'm like okay cool straight straight have to respect this if this goes up i lose my hunt i lose all the advantage that i have so i, I try and attack move here but the villagers decided to get a little cheeky bargain of the sun attack off there um which is cool because he loses a bit of resources but we want to get on top of these villagers and you can see i'm just pulling everything uh we pulled nine ten villagers because the scout plus the three four villagers won't won't do anything we also pulled the prelate so we can have some healing on top of this repair and he doesn't want to lose this because that makes him even more behind so i pulled the food villagers put them on the uh, arkham chapel um and we still have villager production um now he's pulling um, scout here and try and siege it down he actually deletes the barbecue of the sun so this is this this starts getting difficult and this is why um, i'm just going to pause to show you guys what i mean right this guy as a chinese player is playing more aggressive than you've ever expected right um, you can have a similar type of thing happening with the Rus. 
uh, where they go for a outpost rush, right? But you can see again the barbican coming up. I hear the barbican being placed down because of the sound, and then I move in that direction and he cancels it. But this is also bad for me because you can see here he has active 12 villagers, two on gold, so he's he's able to uh, boom kind of in the background, and I have to respect the villagers, right? So I send um, these four villagers to try and kind of pick off the scout, don't get it, and <laughs> get a little cheeky sheep off. And uh, we go back onto the gold, and now we have to kind of decide, okay, the prelate is already in the Arkham Chapel, we drop off the food, we hear the barbican of the, uh, or we send them over to wood, and now I'm forcing my scouts forward so I can have vision, and you can see I'm microing these villagers the whole time, um, so I can actually control this barbican because he wants this barbican that's that's his play if the barbican comes up and it's a great placement he denies this food he denies the gold it's a really really great um thing if this had to go down even if he had to bring six or seven villagers and force this down there would have been a big um um, thing for him. So I learned this from Beastie Cutie. Uh, so to avoid the barbican from the sun going down, just place place some walls. You don't even need to um, to build them. Just the fact that the blueprint is down is going to already help you um, have that down. Because so he can't see this. He probably can see the trenches on the ground, but he won't be able to place the barbican of the sun. So you can see he runs back to base. Um, he's sitting on 400 resources there. He's going for his um, um, feudal age. And even with all of that pressure, you can see we're really, really going to pick up to a comfortable um, um, castle age suit. So we're on 6 minutes 40, very late because we had to invest a lot of these resources into other places but um, if you're raid if you get raided on top of the deer you move back to your sheep which you position in between your Oregon chapel and town center right that's pretty safe and the next thing that i would love to do if if you get a good spawn you can drop this as close to the hunt as possible you don't build the lumber camp so you can have this drop off happening at the Arkham chapel um, but this is going to be your baseline so you're going to have your villagers on the food you have uh, four, three, then five on um, gold for a, a bare castle age. And um, specifically against factions which are not prone to be very aggressive, uh, you can see now outpost going up here. And you're not going to stop this outpost with China and their ex extra building speed. Um, you can try and come, you can see I try and go for a stable that's actually saw this very late. Um, but now he has an outpost up and it doesn't fire on its own. You need the hand cannon slits or you need um, a villager inside there before it starts fighting, right? So this is this is dangerous. When this goes up again, food is going to be denied. Gold is going to be denied. It's going to be very, very difficult once this goes down. So he sees the town center fires at him. He falls back. Um, for another outpost here at the back but we just send forward 13 villagers i think i might even pull more um because we we have to respect this we have the five villagers uh, i could probably have pulled the prelate but i was scared the prelate was going to get picked off um so we we're just sieging this down but also look how quickly these villagers are repairing this outpost so i have to kill an outpost plus deny the repairs and um so i'm just microing the villagers on top of this and i think i might even pull these gold villagers at some point yep there are there we go so that's that's a 16 villager pull we we lost two villagers in the process but um once this outpost go, outpost is killed uh, remember, this is idle time for him as well because he has five villagers um, that's out here. And what I did is I just attack moved on the side here. So if the villagers pop out, we immediately start attacking the villagers. And the villagers now broke the outpost. So no units. And eventually we got a stable down and a horseman coming down. And we are still progressing towards that um, that castle age. And that's that's what I'm trying to say here microing your villagers in such a way with this type of aggression i mean in idle time it's, it's quite difficult i mean it, in the back of his base he could have probably gone for a double archery range and then used that to come supplement his barbican rush because we're being aggressive about it 
But at this point in stage, we just have a single horseman picking off the villagers right here. And we are pushing forward to that castle edge. And he decides to surrender because he failed with the barbican run. Um, so against China, just be wary of that. I think what I could have done better at this point is maybe go for a standard two or three villagers on wood. And I'll show you guys that in the next game. Um... We'll cover all the different factions in this one video. But basically with that China game is the outposts didn't deny anything my outposts. Because I don't have any upgrades in them. I need to create idle time if I put villagers in. And China builds extremely fast. So you have to pull the villagers, right? On top of that, um, China has quite a stable late game and that's what you want to play into as the Holy Roman Empire. You want to get into that age lead and and um into that castle age but just with a few villagers that was a very very successful game in my opinion okay so that was the china match right there let's hop onto a chinese this was also a chinese map um which was the one this was the one that rushed us nine minutes right so this was uh probably not a rush but let's quickly hop into another china chinese game and just see if this was anything different to the previous one because it did go on quite a bit longer um it was 25 minutes or so so again map is actually king of the hill i actually lose this um i'm gonna speed this up extremely quick to show you guys um yeah i'll show you guys basically and what not to do this is this is this section would be what not to do <laughs> because we we do the exact same thing you can see double scout so scout one is there scout two is there and also what i've realized is um the map in these days works a little bit different so you have in this little passage coming through um right on the left or right as you can see here um so around the sides of this this in between this middle hill that's where a lot of the sheep are going to be, right? And then on top of the hill, um, as you can see, these uh, there's a sheep right there. I picked up one right here. So they are on the sacred side, and then the rest are on the sides. Um, bigger maps, you'll find them in these little crevices. That's where the, they'll spawn. But we're going to speed up through this one so we can just show you guys the good and the bad and the ugly. So I find King of the Hill difficult. I haven't taken it out of my map pool, but in the future I would play forward into the um, sacred site because this is your single point of failure. If this gets denied, it's really, really difficult to push into that. Um, so now we have, you can see the microing happening here. Three on gold, two on, um, I have two on the wood because i wanted to test this strategy out on this game rather going for a bit of a booming stage instead of um, anything else so we have the two on the wood and we want to get about to 100 wood um, so we drop the arc and chapel down to get the berries uh, our sheep is back here so they're not on the, the arc and chapel which is a first mistake um, we have our scouts in the enemy base so we can actually see what's going on he goes for a imperial academy um, and yeah, we, we standard thing is we rush up with six villagers on the open chapel. Then the prelate goes in there immediately. We have four villagers on wood because that's going to build us stables and, um, infrastructure. And we have, once you get the mill, you can see I'm playing a much more passive, um, round here. No upgrades on the mill. Um, the mill was for the fact of getting that upgrade. Because you can't do that with the um, Arkham Chapel. Um, and now you can see we go for a Regnitz. And it's under 7 minutes, 8 minutes to get it down, right? Sorry, there's something in my throat here. Let me just um, give a moment to edit this part out. <coughs> okay, cool. So, what we want to do... Um, sorry about that. We want to get the regiments up. You can see the prelates are out. We couldn't run to this relic here because there was the scout that would have killed the prelates. So we sent forward two prelates because we see these two um, relics here at the back. And this is what I'm going to get towards, right? So we have one, two relics being picked up. Third relic was picked up all the way at the back here. You can see they're coming back now. 
you can drop them in the residence cathedral and this is this is something that that i want to get at right um now you can see we have the two stables he actually secured the middle already you can see here he has um eight villagers on the stone um he has the barbican of the sun up and we are just going for relics while he's going for stone right so we go and secure this relic at the back we send forward these um knights so we can defend and now the prelates will start moving out again uh one prelate right there and one prelate right there so we're gonna have all of the relics this game with with a regiment's cathedral this is what i'm trying to show you guys right so regiment's cathedral plus five relics okay so that's the first one being picked up there we have the horseman that's gonna help this uh prelate with the wolf getting that one done and these knights are gonna pick up uh or defend this little relic back here and the knights are gonna siege down but this china player knows exactly what he's doing right so he builds a um, forward keep he actually builds a market but he goes for the forward keep that's able to have vision on my base right so from his perspective this is what he sees um so he has no vision at the back but he has the keep and that's going to keep firing away at this um um Richens cathedral right so this gives me 600 gold per minute plus uh this relic that's been dropped in here next relic is on its way back so that's five relics so now we should be comfortably um with this one going up this this should give us um 600 plus the two in here seven eight hundred gold per minute right just on, on that without any villagers on gold we should have insane amounts of gold it's a, if this was old holy roman empire you you are gucci there's nothing wrong um you have all the gold in the world you don't have to have a single villager on gold and you're going to be so far ahead um the thing why i like holy roman empire with a single town center is because when you get those relics the amount of villagers that you have to put on gold for those relics you can count them as villagers because it's free infinite gold right so let's say it's about five or six villagers to get a hundred gold per minute or well these ones are inspired so let's say in a normal scenario that's six villagers so you have in this case 18 villagers lead plus these two let's say you have about a 25 villager buffer just with these relics that's inside here right and on this one you can see it's going to tick up to uh 200 i don't think it's going to be more than 200 but here the three relics gives you 600 gold per minute and uh, this actually goes up i think i wonder if it goes to 300 we'll just keep an eye on that but you can see there the the gold is 300 per minute so 150 i think this might go to 400 so it is 200 gold uh per relic right so in this type of scenario please let me know what you guys think but uh i go for a second town center it's china so first thing that i did wrong is i sacrificed those four knights i didn't micro them at all um i stopped scouting so you can see his whole base is closed off uh, that little wall going back down there um he has the astronomical clock tower which i assumed he, he is going to build and we also have to deal with this keep so we do that by starting to train a counterweight tribute so i'm like cool okay he's castle age i'm castle age i have all the relics so this is going to go really really well for me right so i start training um more knights here you can see a single knight going out and we start building barracks we get a counterweight trebuchet out we're going to deal with this keep and then we're going to start pushing in right i have some units here at the back and i'm actually surprised because there's no this is surprised is or or lack of bad scouting is probably the better statement because i see this right and i have uh, the two units here that wants to deal with that so I'm, i scroll up i see he's actually capturing the sacred site so these two units that i do have available is going to go in and try and deal with this and as soon as i go for this uh he jumps into the barbican and now i see okay cool this guy is capturing the sacred site so i need to get going right so i have um how many villagers seven villagers on wood plus inspiration on some of them um we have enough food we have the double town center we have the counterweight trebuchet we have unit production so things are starting to look good and he captures the sacred side at 15 minutes right so th this is just bad 
bad game mechanics from my side because I have a single second counterweight trebuchet uh, dealing with this uh, keep right now, but this keep was just to buy him time because what he wants is he wants to get security on the sacred side. So I'm quite nervous for a raid. I'll pull some villagers to close off the side right here soon. But you know we're getting we're getting up there. But this is this is this is my argument with the different landmarks right now. Um, I have there we go a thousand gold per minute. Let's just thousand four hundred gold per minute because of the villagers picking up gold right here. So we have a thousand gold per minute and we have enough wood. We have enough food to really just not struggle. So I quickly go for a uh, little raid here. And this is this is probably my first mistake, right? I'm getting nervous about the sacred side. And because of that, I start pushing instead of having an army that could push. And what I mean by that is when you decide to push, um, you have to think of what your enemy has. So I don't know what's going on up here, but there is quite a bit going on right here. And I just destroyed the keep. So... I needed at least a scout or two before this army to go and see what's going on before I push in because that's going to be able to help me get uh, information and now you can see these uh, veteran spearmen are inside my base causing a bit of havoc. This is causing um, anxiety so I don't know what, what's happening. Is he going to come with a big army around this corner? So I should either uh, deal with these spearmen so i send some men at arms to deal with them and now um we are here and the spring ult is going to be able to start picking off these units i already lose another knight so that's five knights and they have the um Springled emplacements that's coming up. He has the Barbican with the Springled emplacements, so that's already in his favor. But what I'm what I'm saying is, these relics in this monastery and in this Regent's Cathedral, in my opinion, in this type of game, does not mean much, especially in a map like King of the Hill. If it was a different map, maybe this would have been a much much better game. But you can see all the production buildings going down because I need to get army out. If I don't get units out, I'm going to lose, right? So these prelates uh, are here. We have um, those upgrades coming through. So what happens with the upgrades is the prelates inspires the units so they get an extra 15% damage and one additional armor. So you can see it's five armor um, and that's without any upgrades. On the, on the military, right? So those upgrades are just from the prelate inspiration that they give that extra um, <clears throat> one armor on the inspired villagers or units. And if they're not inspired, um, they don't have that. But you can see the extra damage there, 40. So if you have knights with a few prelates in that army that inspire them, it's eight units, by the way. You can, you can manage eight units with one prelate. Um, that damage is huge imagine going into a fight with 20 lancers and five um um prelates it's it's kind of like a delhi sultanate play right but yeah so now we start pushing forward i want the counterweight trebuchets to go and deal with this but he starts pushing forward and this is where i also started learning about um the map and you can see i'm struggling with food i'm trading my gold so i can have food for for units and i also need to get siege out because we're probably going to go deal with Chukunu and um, and crossbowmen, as you can see right here. Um, so if we want to deal with that, we need to get gold. We need to get something out. And it just does not feel good having five relics and struggling this much. It does not feel good. And it just it's because of the single choke point on the sacred side. Once you secure the sacred side, you either need to go for a death push or you need to uh, push into this. And I thought this army would do a lot better. So I go forward. Uh, you can see the... the um, so the crossbowman deals with all of the heavy units here in front, which is archers, because I made archers to deal with the crossbowman. I saw the crossbowman. I had the men-at-arms, which was supposed to deal with uh, any forward attack, like the spearmen. So yeah, army comp-wise, just lost everything in literally less than a minute. And this is basically GG, because um, we just lost our whole army. We have... 1,100 gold per minute. Uh, we actually go up with a keep right here. And um, after the keep, you can see my unit production is, is very low because it feels like I, I just 
can't get food and, and, and resources fast enough to, to deal with this. But I should have probably gone for unit production instead of this else back. And the else back I should have put maybe forward and used that as a defense with more villagers. So it was winnable. Um, but this is what I'm trying to say. This type of gold means less in my opinion these days if you have these type of units with all of this it's it's much more difficult to invest what's it 300 600 um a thousand uh what 900 a thousand 200 thousand 350 thousand four five hundred thousand five hundred wood was used to build infrastructure right if this was the um I, I don't know why I keep forgetting this name. Burgers Palace, you would be pumping out units without having to invest 1,500 resources in something else. This keep could have been forward. This keep could have been right here. That would have had um, um, siege over these units. And I was what would have been able to push forward. So very bad management and, and placement of landmarks. A very, very safe... Um, uh, passive playstyle that I don't recommend with the Holy Roman Empire right now and these relics should have gone in this Alsback Palace and into the keep and these keeps should have been forward because you're not going to deal with a height advantage, 5 nest of bees and um, how many crossbows is this? It's 27 crossbows. So all he needs to do is just defend this front line and he has a minute left and he already killed my army twice so he knows I have no units. I even said in the chat I can't believe I'm actually losing this because you can see on the resources 1,100 gold, 1,100 wood, 1,600 food per minute and I still can't do anything against him just because he already secured this and I already wasted my resources in places. So I understand why I lost this game. There's, there's, no, there's no doubt about it. Um, but I'm not a fan of the Reginus Cathedral right now. Yes, 600 gold per minute is late is great yes this might be amazing in team games um but i don't think that it's it's a little too little too late that's what i'm in my opinion what i think about it but yeah this was winnable watching it back um i understand next time what i need to do especially with the key placements um but that was what not to do with the holy roman empire okay so let's quickly jump into another game. So this one is going to be against the English. And there we go. So this was a 49 minute game. I'm not going to um, play it slow. I'll, I'll, I'll jump through the gist of it. But I want, what I want to show you guys against the English is what you need to plan for in the beginning of the game. Different to your normal playstyle, so that you can still go into that extremely aggressive castle age. Um, <clears throat> without struggling too much against those English longbowmen or those English raids. So again, first scout out town center on Keybind 2, prelate inspiring the villagers, bring the first two sheep back, and then your second scout's going to run around. Now with this specific map, let's quickly look at where the sheep are. You need about 8 to 9 sheep. Around the back of the, your, you'll have one big side, an uh, open side, as you can see right here. Um, and that's that's a gamble in my opinion if you go for that first uh, you want to go through these choke points that's one thing you want to go through the back choke points <clears throat> and through your other one here on the side so usually what I do is I send one villager uh, one scout forward to kind of play the luck of the draw at the back and the other scout as you can see right here um, I missed this little sheep I'm not watching um, <clears throat> So the one goes forward and if I don't find anything here, you click it to the side of the map backwards and around. So that picks up all the sheep, uh, usually between these choke points and so forth. Uh, with this one running around the back, you can see um, the sheep right here. Uh, there's going to be a choke point, but no sheep right on that choke point. Um, you can see this side is, is basically bare. There, there's the sheep, basically the choke point sheep. Did we scout close to you? Yeah, we were very close. You see, if I just went a little bit more forward, I would have found it because that's his wide side. Um, if you look at where he spawned, he, he spawned to the right. I spawned to the left. So this is his wide side. So this would be a better place to go for, um, whereas this would be my side to go for. 
Um, so he's on the color teal, I'm on the color blue. I like actually the blue Holy Roman Empire. And now we have um, villagers, we have four on food, right? They are inspired. We are between a straggler tree and the food. And we want to keep this food uh, the wood production up because we want to deal with the English. The English rushes, the English deals with pushing into you. Placement wise, I would give this a 5 out of 10. This outpost can be right here. Um, but the problem is your uh, mining camp needed to be where my outpost is or vice versa. This mining camp needs to be there with the outpost right here in the front. The reason being if you start, you'll have vision before they get on top of you. So when they start pushing in, you garrison moving forward into the outpost, but you'll get, be able to get shots off because they have to move past the distance of the outpost uh, before they can kill you, right? So, yeah, we're picking up a lot of villagers. Also, I love running through the back of people's bases because you tend to find quite a bit of sheep there. Uh, we bring our scout back now uh, with two sheep just to kind of deal with this food supply right here. Um, so, not not the best scouting. I, I uh, lost the sheep that, were, that was in this corner right here. There's two on there. There's one right here. So if I did a little loop around the back here, it would have been a lot better before I went through the crevice. Um, and this crevice, again, second time I run past these sheep, um, just not, not uh, you know, learning how to scout a little bit better. There is some some uh, skill <laughs> to, profess to, to to scouting, right? So now we have that macro good. Uh, we have the gold that we need. So we're not moving the gold villagers. Um, I did a forest drop off. I actually thought it would have been enough food, but it wasn't. And I moved some villagers over to the mill. I don't, I don't know if the mill... Uh, it's hard. I don't know where to place the wheelbarrow upgrade yet because the wheelbarrow is a huge upgrade and it's a huge bonus to have, right? But to get wheelbarrow, you have to sacrifice some resources. And you can see now he's microed a little bit over the food. He has the right gold there. He places his um, um, landmark down and he went for farms. So this is very standard um, English play these days for going for the farms, he gets the wheelbarrow. So he's in a good spot, right? So we go for the Arkan Chapel. I have the two, I actually rushed this really hard because I know it was later and mismanaged with the sheep, um, outposts. It's the first time I tried uh, the wood play um, because I haven't done that yet. And I know the English can be aggressive, right? So yeah, it's, it's very aggressive to send this many villagers on, um, Arkham Chapel 12 because that's idle time. That's about a minute and a half of idle time and with an inspiration buff that's a lot of um, idle time caused and my predator was actually garrisoned. My predator wasn't even out inspiring. So I only realized that after the Arkham Chapel went down. So a bit of bad management on my side but you can see I moved the sheep to the right place and now I have um, um, how many villagers is it? 12 on food and we have five on wood. You'll see the prelate popping out now, going to the Arkham Chapel, so they'll get inspired. And we have gold, we have food, and we are pushing for that castle age. That's the goal, right? Castle age. So let's start speeding this up a little bit, uh, just until his landmark or his unit starts getting down. You can see three villagers, 12 villagers. We got it down, but <clears throat> he, he's getting decent amount of food and stuff. And this 40% buff is huge. Again, placing down a second outpost to deny any push on this side. Um, and you can see he's scouting out so he can start understanding his point of access or his point from which he can attack me, right? Um, so I understand if the outpost goes down here, he's going to crawl forward to try and get on top of this. He sees this and he starts pushing forward. Uh, I bait out the the scout and i do eventually get the wall down but now we have our outpost right here and we have a forward outpost going down here again the resource is in front which is bad you want the outpost at least to the forward or to the top of that 
with your mining camp behind it. So this is mining camp before in front of it and the, the outpost the behind it. Um, and that's not going to be good. So now we actually get to see the outpost going up. And I have no units right here, so I need to respect it. And you can see how much running needs to happen for me from here to there to drop it off. If this was a better placement, it would have been a lot more efficient. And I go for stone and I rush up the outpost, garrison the villagers, uh, trying to get a few kills. But if this becomes a mess, it's going to be very, very difficult to deal with. And now I need to respect the gold. So I sent forward a villager, he almost found me out here, but I sent forward my villagers onto a gold. Usually you have a safe gold right here at the back or in the corner right here. We didn't, we have all the way here in the middle of the base, all our gold here in the front. So this is great for him because he can deny both gold veins. Um, and this was just lucky. I have the scout to give me vision. I have the four villagers picking away. And you can see how much more I'm... Um, behind or ahead on food i have way too much food um so i couldn't really micro it properly just because of the rating but if my placement was better on my outposts i would have been able to get done what i needed to so i get a stable down because the stable is going to deal with the archers um, and we are pushing for a burgrave palace so he has quite a bit of an army here eight archers five spearmen um, quite a nice army here, so he has to push in, and I, I don't think he sees this. Let's let's just check it from his perspective. What does he see? Can he actually see this? Oh, he scouts it out. Okay, so he scouts it out, and then he starts pushing. Um, I wonder if we can switch over to quickly to that um, panoramic view. That would be camera, right? Classic panoramic. Let's see. That's zoomed in. That's even worse. Oh, wow. Why would everyone, anyone even play like that? I didn't actually... It just felt so much better going for the... It's the same. I don't know. I need to change it. But anyway, maybe that's a little bug. So we have our villagers now. Um, he needs to stop the Burgrave. And the Burgrave, I learned this the hard way by trying to get this up. So Burgrave is in the front here. It's half health. I had to cancel that because I am not going to get that up with this uh, longbowman right here. So I build it right next to my town center. Town center gives me control. Uh, we have our villagers right here on the gold. <laughs> he still doesn't scout it out. Uh, lucky, lucky for us. Um, but now as soon as you can see, I, I rushed the 24 villagers and then I pushed them back to food, back to wood, everywhere they need to go. And now you can see how many men at arms with a single building gets pushed out here. I would have argued that the upgrade might have been better because they go from 3 to 4 arranged armor. So they make a big, big difference. And the thing is, this is just buying time because all I'm doing is the units are going to start pumping out of this Burgrave Palace. Um, and you can see with the single land connect or two in there, we are really going to do some decent damage. You can see how long it is, four, five, six volleys he needs to get off to get on top of that. And we are getting the marching drills so we can chase them down. But that stopped the whole English rush. So basically what I'm trying to say is place your outposts better against the English. Get those first five villagers on your um, wood line before the feudal age timer, not after, because you'll struggle. As you can see, I'm already, I had to deny this building. I lost an outpost. I couldn't farm this gold. I have to spend 50 extra resources on this gold vein back here. Um, and then I have these men at arms and a landscape. It. You can see how quickly they go down because they don't have the arranged on them. Um, but we have the men-at-arms pushing against the English and checking back on his map uh, He has the farms down more farms being placed down here comfortable gold comfortable wood So he, he's good. He got plus one range uh, armor and attack. So you should have probably gone for melee armor um, What what finished on my side the food so now now it starts getting a little bit more difficult, but you can see now we have um Quite a bit of units out, the gold out, the scout out, and now we want to start playing into relics, right? So first relic going up here, and these relics needs to be placed in your outposts. And this, compared to the previous game, 
is where the value will start coming in. I'll start speeding this up a little bit more so we can get into the game. Um, so my Burger of Palace can pump at units um, or I need to decide what I'm going to do. So right now I sent forward the raid. So he's in the castle edge just now. He was still in the feudal edge. But I have seven men at arms with um, plus five ranged armor because we did get the armor upgrade of the blacksmith you can see right there um so these uh, archers are gonna do one damage each one damage each uh the town center is gonna do the most damage here on these units but you can see how much damage <laughs> that is a gatling cannon uh so we didn't get much value out of these men at arms um this is basically sacrificing an army but it forces him to respond in a certain way, um, going with outposts, archery ranges, so you can go for crossbowmen, and that gives me a chance to transition into um, a different type of army. But all I'm trying to do is getting these relics, because the relics is going to give me the power in this game, even though it's not that much, it's 100 gold per minute, like with any other faction. But because you have this Burger of Palace, you can pump out units, spearmen, men at arms, landskin it, whatever he throws at you, you'll be able to defend. Um, even if some of the French games I've had, um, you are just able to comfortably push into that. We actually um, lose the relic right here. Um, he has crossbowmen and stuff inside the base, and as soon as I see that, I just pump out uh, a bunch of men at arms again, get ready with the men at arms, and then just run him down again. Because we have that marching drills, we can just keep pushing forward uh, these men of arms and wither them down. Um, there's the army, there's the first keep going up. And we're still sitting on a single town center. So villager wise, we are on 55. Um, he is on 70. So he has a 20 villager lead. Um, and we need to uh, decide either we're going units. Um, here you can see he's actually going for a keep as well. Uh, we need to go for units where did I pick up that relic? The only one I didn't get was this one because that's right inside his base. We picked up the one that was dropped here on the corner. Um, but now that's dropped into the keep and you can see now we're getting the gold still. You still get the gold because you can drop your relics inside your keeps, inside your outposts. Um, and we have these stables pumping out um, um, knights so we can deal with army. But I want to get to the mid game where we start pushing into the sacred site. Because that's where things are going to get much better. So we have a second out town center now. Uh, sitting on 72 villagers. He's sitting on 89. So getting a lot more villagers stable now. And now we push forward. And this landmark. This I've never known how strong this landmark is. I'm still I started playing against these aggressive factions. Like the English and the French. And... The Rus that loves their siege. That loves their siege. So you get this Alsback Palace up. It takes a bit of time because it has more resource, uh, more, um, what do you call it, uh, health than other buildings. But if you want to get a landmark up like this, by the way, just a quick, quick one on this army. Bunch of crossbowmen. We have veteran horsemen. They do plus 11 damage versus ranged. So all these ranged units are going to take extra damage. We have... Uh, Two men at arms there, that should have been a little bit more just to deal with uh, his knights and the spearmen. But these horsemen are going to deal with the crossbow. They're going to take a lot of damage. This is a lot of crossbowmen, right? Um, but they are going to do quite a bit of damage uh, on these um, crossbowmen. You can see how he has to back off because they don't do that extra damage against us. And now he pulls actually 33 villagers. I don't know why he pulls 33 villagers. What does he have? He doesn't have anything. I don't know why he pulled 33 villages. But goes for gold. And now we have our um, Alsback Palace here. We do get the cannon emplacement. And you can see the range on this cannon, cannon emplacement is 10. So that's quite a big range. Uh, all I'm trying to do is deny him from pushing forward. So that I can get some more resources going. Uh, we have wood stabilizing, we have our food stabilizing quite nicely here at the back. Uh, we closed off this back corner right here, just a wooden palace, but there's a stone wall here. This will become a stone wall shortly. Um, 
and then this is the open side this is more difficult to to control so now he puts a very aggressive keep right on top of me and we send forward the horseman you can see how i run past him with the horseman but now we have our Ausbeck palace with the 7500 house against the keep and we actually have the monastery this upgrade right here uh, gives your villagers a 15% um, bonus building upgrade if you want to push the early Ausbeck palace get that upgrade and then this this will go up in the speed that you know china is doing it. so now we're just microing literally burgraf palace with horsemen um, because the horseman has that plus seven ranged armor so that's going to deal with you know longbow and crossbows very well and then we have land kinets and then minute arms to fight these on right the nice thing is every time this gets low right every time this gets low i have villagers right here at the back and the thing that how things works these days is you need um, stone to repair your your keeps right so all i do i just pop the emergency repair as you can see there and my building's house starts pushing up i use the spring bolt. this is a quite a big army you have to respect this army but you can see he's gonna eat away at his um, stone quite quite quickly and all i'm doing is i'm waiting for emergency repair there we go first one went up second one went up and that's with the double trebuchet firing out at this aspect palace Look at, look at the amount of siege on this top of it. So they we go for one big, big raid, uh, which is basically horsemen and men at arms. And that was just to deal with the siege. But again, emergency repair is up. And we get a, that get a repair up again. I mean, any other keep would not last this long. Um, we have the extra f 10 uh, fire damage armor and we also got the keep upgrade which gives it the extra health there's an upgrade right here uh, so this is a very beefy um, keep seven and a half thousand health and we also put down uh, more keeps to get some map control same comp the whole time land connects men at arms horsemen because we know he's basically focusing mainly on archers and yeah, even even with the uh, cannon, the problem with the cannon is I can use the uh, Ausbeck Palace with my cannon emplacement and siege down the cannons. You can actually focus them down um, by right-clicking them. So I didn't have to get too many spring or or stuff out, but I have the spring out for the trebuchets, to respect the trebuchets. And he actually has the uh, uh, Wingard Palace and he's pumping up units with that. So... This is bad for him because he needs to use stone every single time he needs to repair. But we have the Ausbeck Palace um, and we have quite a nice army here at the back. He goes for a little bit of a run through raid uh, at the back of our base. And also, oh, this is something I wanted to show you guys. Um, so you see this keep doesn't have the emergency repair, right? So take a villager, you build a house and you just link them up. You can't do it through walls, just so you know. So if there's a building this side and a building that side, they won't touch. A, walls, a wall breaks it. It has to be continuous buildings, um, stables, those type of things. They do um, touch in that, in that influence zone. So I send my horsemen here to the back to deal with that. Um, and then <clears throat> I have my keeps out. And what you want to do, just so you guys know in the future, you want to get these relics placed inside this keep this is a keep you can place a relic in this which gives it another huge bump uh, you can see on the in, in the english uh, it has 15 bow damage uh, 34 spring old 73 canyon uh, cannon cannon uh, we have 40 spring old where's our cannon 70 cannon uh, they have 73 so they get a bit of extra damage um, on that cannon and they also have the network of castle bonus uh, which gives these units 50 percent attack speed which is a great upgrade to have um, but now you can see how much th this keep and this uh, outpost means uh, we have no relics placed in them but we have the relics here at the back and they're still trickling in gold uh, we also got the monastery upgrade which is right here the one that looks like a little house which means all your um, um, what do you call it relics that are inside these outposts and keeps gives you food wood gold and stone so you get 
really, really, really a lot of value. And you drop them inside your outposts. That's that's amazing. You don't have to drop it in the monastery. So they and they buff up the uh, attacks that you get. So you can see on on this, uh, it's that extra twenty five attack that it gets. It gets uh, extra range as well. So this one has eight point four tiles of range. Um, this one also has 8.4 tiles of range. Uh, this one, without it, has 7 or 10 tiles of range. That's just with the cannon and placement upgrade. Okay. But the main thing I want to show is how strong Alsbeck Palace is. I would argue that's better than, Pal than Palace of Swabia because of the map control it gives you. And you can see how this Alsbeck Palace deals with the cannons. It actually destroys the cannons, so you have to go trebuchets. Um, he can't use the cannons because the Alsberg Palace is just going to destroy it. So I pull villagers uh, to try and get this repair up. So he's going for quite an aggressive push here. Um, getting those trebuchets out. And those trebuchets has those upgraded damage. Um, so yeah, it's quite difficult. But we're just popping that emergency repair. It doesn't cost us any stone. You can see he's run out of stone. I'm trying to place these keeps up and I'm, I'm giving my army at the back and I'm walling in so he doesn't have the run around option and we tied up this keep by building the um, buildings so they can actually touch and now we have those emergency repairs on these keeps here at the back and it's yeah I don't know what more to to do right now but we have that emergency repairs and we have to respect three trebuchets and at this point in time uh, we have 15 land canets we push in forward with that army and we do a little run around with the horseman uh, to get on top of his food disrupt his back of his army we lose our whole army but because we have a lot of production we'll just pump out units again and all I wanted to do was just buy a bit of time so I can get that emergency repair up again with my Alsbeck Palace you can see how much health it's just it's just insane. Men at arms being able to run the trebuchets down. Um, if he micro that, but he had to deal with this at the back, it would have been a lot easier for him. But now he lost the trebuchets. And as soon as we have the emergency repair, we're going to repair again. We have villagers repairing right now. That's actually going to use stone or wood. Why doesn't this use? What does this use? So I'm on, am I just gathering so much stone right now at the, at the moment that you can't see it? 120. Is this a bug? So they repaired? Okay, I don't, I don't get it. Wait, so why didn't this use resources? So the Alsbeck Palace got repaired, but I don't, I didn't see any resources being used. Okay, so that's something to note. Um, again, elite horsemen plus seven ranged armor plus three melee armor, sixteen damage, uh, twin, yeah, sixteen damage plus thirteen versus range, so twenty-six damage versus all these ranged units. A very effective army. Push horsemen forward, run them around, uh, and jump on top of them with men at arms. And now you can see horsemen just in the back making havoc. And we actually pushed into this uh, fight and win it. Um, and now we have our own siege, and we'll just run these keeps down. Um, and at this point in stage, with these horsemen and stuff just getting through to his base the whole time, uh, we'll be able to siege him down very, very effectively. But the two things from this game is the strength of the Auspect Palace. You can see these little uh, placement influence uh, against the emergency repairs from the buildings and we also have the extra health upgrade from the university so now we're sitting on 9750 health and these keeps are sitting on six and a half thousand health so yeah we don't have to struggle with food or wood uh, so we just keep raiding uh, with our own um, uh, uh, what do you call it, trebuchets and we just keep fighting forward with horsemen and elite knights and anything that we can throw at him. But yeah, Alsbeck Palace, definitely, in my opinion, S-tier landmark. And that defense against the English early on, that's what you need. Uh, that placement is very, very important if you want to get it right. Okay, so now we want to hop into a game of the French. So we've done English, we've done China. Um, 
This is a game against Slayer. He's 13 minute game, French player. I think I know exactly what I did in this game. Um, but let me know what you guys think. I know we'll we'll jump through all the different factions and whatever you struggle with, this will help a lot. But let me know if there's more details that you need on specific topics so we can actually just cover it a little bit more. I'm, I'm talking about it so we can actually just get the details done of it. So I love this map as well, Mongolian Heights. It has a tendency to spawn pretty, pretty interesting all the time. Um, a lot of sheep, as you can see, just one down here, three, four, five, six, uh, seven. So you, again, you'll have a, a higher rift side. Sometimes they close off, sometimes they don't. Sometimes you get a nice little wood spawn that closes it off. Or sometimes you get a nice little infinite wall like this across the front of your base and you can, you know, safely, safely uh, get a very, very uh, secure base going just because of the wall. He has the same. You can see he has this uh, wooden wall at the back, but mine closed off on the side. So it makes it a lot easier because you can see it's it's attaching to this corner here. So that it, it's like a wall. Uh, so that's our first scout back there, second scout right here. We have the first two sheep that came back onto the food. We Also, uh, just a little trick, if you have those three villagers and golds at the back, drop off the food, garrison them, and then let them go out the back, because then they actually lose this walking time because they pop out right here at the back. Um, as far as I know, they always pop out at the back because that's safer <laughs> than popping out at the front. Uh, I don't know if, if these villagers would pop out here. I assume that's the case. That's just a landmark uh, scenario. Uh, I don't think there's any room for turning the landmark. But yeah, so we have our six on gold. Uh, sorry, three on gold, six on food. And we're going to rally a little bit more onto the gold because the gold is quite far. So we have to respect the distance and just get a little bit more onto the gold. He actually has a really nice gold spawn. It's forward, but it's good. And now we have the four on the gold. Um, bringing back the first sheep, getting some more scouting out. And I scouted my whole own side first because I know it would be it's a guarantee to pick up those sheeps first um, compared to him and whatever else I don't pick up I can go and scavenge on his side so five on gold now six on um, on sheep and now we need to start planning on going to about eight on gold uh, on food so that's that's basically the sweet spot is eight because you'll use six of the villagers to build your landmark um, with the inspiration of the prelate, uh, while the other two just keep picking off at the food. Uh, those two plus the 40% upgrade or, or gather inspiration um, would be enough to sustain the food because you'll have a little bit of over micro on the food always. Um, I could have probably gone four, but I wanted to get the gold up sooner because it's the French. Because you're playing against the French that loves rushing with um, knights, he actually went up with two villagers instead of three. That's very, very slow in my opinion. Um, but we actually go up with six villagers, and the six villagers are to secure the berry. We don't have to build any... Um, um, lumber camp because we are right on top of the wood line. We move our sheep into the influence of the Arkin Chapel and we don't have to drop off there. We can drop off safely on the town center because our villagers will be right here. Now you can see while the Arkin Chapel is busy, three and a half minutes, you know this can get done under four minutes. Four minutes, 20, they can have a lancer inside or a, a, a royal knight inside your base. So you want to start going over to wood very quickly. I, I can't remember if I pull these villagers or if I just drop this onto the wood. But we have two villagers now on the wood. We don't have to use wood because um, we're still fine on the population. We'll drop a second house now. So now our wood is starting to get low. And we need to start planning for um, the Royal Knight attack, right? So usually what the French does is they go for a Royal Knight, they go for archers, and that's the type of comp that they chase with. But generally what you'll expect is those Royal Knights uh, very, very aggressively inside your base. So we have our villagers actually on berries. I hope I move them onto the sheep soon because berries are less efficient than sheep. 
Um, Prelate's still not inside the <laughs> the the chapel yet, uh, but it's just always uh, I need to get better at microing because I have this scouts running around town center training villagers now. Four on the wood line here, and the prelate needs to get inside the damn building. I don't know why. There we go. I think I see him standing around doing nothing, and now you can see we have that beautiful inspiration on these uh, thirteen villagers. And now we have the outpost coming up, night coming out, we spot, spotted that out with our scout here. So scout so, sees right there, other scouts right here, so I can see if he goes left or right. So I know exactly where this royal knight is, which is the threat right now. And he probably attacked, moved it in a certain direction, but he needs to, you know, do something. You can see he's, he's looking for blood. He finds a scout here and then... Um, I, I'm just going to run the scout back to the town center. I get a little wall down here in the front, so you can't raid my wood line and cause idle time. Uh, you have to come onto the, uh, what do you call it, the town center. And because of the Arkham Chapel placement, it's behind my base, it's behind the outpost. Remember in the, earlier I said your... Um, your outpost in the front and your drop off at the back because you can't really get in between the town center um, and the outpost because you'll get damaged right so now this is what i want to show you guys against the french against the french i like going for a wall around on top of the gold because usually this gets raided by your uh, royal knights because as soon as you isolate the holy roman empire gold you know, they find that it's a lot more difficult. So I respect the knights coming in. I'll drop these villagers forward in the outpost, but he doesn't get a single shot off. Because we run towards it, he has to come towards us. But by the time he gets here, we'll garrison into the building and get that extra damage off. This is this is as perfect as you can get it uh, for the defense against the knights. And if, if it was, was me, I, I wouldn't I, You can see the scout actually seeing the more knights coming in. So always leave a scout inside your enemy's base. It does help a lot. Um, we have this scout right here not doing much. I would argue that if it was dropped basically back here, it would have meant more. But we know there's more Royal Knights pumping out on his side. Um, that's one, two, three, four, five Royal Knights. In a normal scenario, that would be very scary, right? And you can see the Knights coming here from the, from the back. And... Um, the scouts right here and we have our villagers very very safe underneath the town center but look at this look how cheeky this is we have a wall down this one of these little gym or dairies or sarah or whatever the name you know they they chop down this little bamboo tree which was apparently the support and they sneak through the back can you believe it i don't know how to fix this because you can see the um the wall is actually it's actually like to the edge there, but was this wall then this the blockage or I don't know I don't know how this works, but I I mean with this even with the palisade wall the the ends right, um, it goes into the wood line, but it was still managing to sneak through. I don't get that 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 kind of annoyed me, but we did pop our villagers out now and now his knights are at the back. Uh, if he tried fighting this, he would have died, obviously. <laughs> and now I'm just like, screw this wall. Screw this little wooden line. I'm just going to wall this in so I have a bit more wood at least uh, to defend myself with. Um, you can't really push with archers as well because if you push onto archers uh, on, on this back line, you're going to struggle. But you can see now we have all the gold we need. We have our food. And now we go for a very safe burgrave. We learned from the other games. Safe Burgrave right underneath town center. If it gets raided, we just pop back in. Villagers running to the outpost again. We have the walls. I'm smiling. I'm smiling because what, what more do you need from this? Because we have four royal knights, which is going to delay his um, actually five, six, seven, eight royal knights. There's no way he's going to go castle in the next four or five minutes at least. So with those royal knights out, um, you know, what do you do? What do you, uh, with this many royal knights out and a castle age Burgrave Palace, eight and a half minutes, which is really respectable. Um, seven villagers on wood, eight villagers on food. 
and then the five villagers on gold what more do you need he's gonna have faster villager production but we have a very very safe you can see he has to run from behind and we just move the villagers back we lose one villager from the charge but we just garrison and the gatling cannon starts going off as soon as he's out of the way we get back onto the food Burgraf palace is out spearman's coming out we just micro a little bit on the gold so we can get this little uh, upgrade we get the men at arm upgrade first it's cheaper as well guys uh, upgraded men at arms that's probably a place where they might look to nerf uh, the holy roman empire is by getting rid of the the first upgrade being 125 gold they might increase that to 250 gold and they might decrease the starting wood i think that's how they're gonna nerf the holy roman empire um, just to delay that timing to a more acceptable second age timing so you now you can see archery range very standard french play um, but can't really do anything with these royal knights because we have spearmen men at arms men at arms gonna do extra damage against um, the the heavy units only when they get an upgrade so now you can see the damage is 12 as soon as you get these heavy mace upgrades and the two-handed weapon upgrades then they'll start really really doing those damage those extra heavy damage against um, the lancers you can see he ran around at the back because you can't really do anything here on the top we have our spearmen here in front and we just have a nice little army starting to build here um, not trying to do too much just getting uh, safe on the food transitioning more onto the berries still no wheelbarrow still no horticulture he's probably have he has no uh, wheelbarrow no horticulture as well um, so which is good for us he's going for a second town center we can see that and now as soon as we have a bit of a mass we will start pushing into his base because all we wanted to do was the extra resources we had to spend uh, to get safe and a little bit of idle time we have we had we wanted to just get these spearmen and stuff out uh, no spearmen in this army but we do get the spearmen upgrade so we can get some spearmen through here and this is going to do very well because we have the normal upgrade no mace upgrades but you'll see what i want to show you guys is um we are, we are getting a lot of gold right now, right? Getting the houses, getting food, transitioning into farms because we don't have to build any infrastructure because we have the Burgrave Palace. Um, he's securing the relics, as you can see right here, right here, and right there. Securing the relics, we, we're not caring about the relics, we're just going forward into the space. <laughs> I mean, think about it, it's so, it's so funny, right? Yeah, if, if, if I was this guy, right, Slayers, he's like, okay, cool, I have eight royal knights, he's not going to touch the relic, he's not going to get any relics, you know, all three relics are secure, he's trying to push into his own castle age, and then I run into his base with eight men at arms, a lance grenade, and a spearman. <laughs> It's like, what do you do? Like, this is the, what, is it, what does Ozzy Jonga call it? He calls it the, um, the Holy Roman Death Bomb. There's the death bomb, guys. <laughs> so now we have uh, more spearmen that's going to come out immediately. And as soon as we see uh, the aggression and the defense starting, we know those holy Roman, those knights are going to be on their way back. With the knights on their way back, as you can see, like literally all of them on their way back. And that's what, four, eight, uh, ten, ten knights, right? So big number, big number. Uh, but immediately while they're even running us down, we're getting the heavy mace upgrades. And with that mace upgrade being so, so quick, you can see 12 seconds, 12 seconds for these upgrades. As soon as they get on top of us, uh, we will have, instead of 12 damage, now we have... Um, now we have that extra six heavy damage so 18 damage against these royal knights and he has to respect it because this army is just been standing at the back here but we do send forward the spearmen now and while we are sending them forward we are getting that upgrade now you can see it's veteran spearmen uh normal men at arms and we run the men at arms back so we can kind of bait this army i mean there's there's what 10 we counted 10 or 11 royal knights here and they'll brace, pull back into spearmen. <laughs> look, look at these numbers dwindling here. 
Look at that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven knights just went down and he taps out, guys. <laughs> oh, I don't know what more to say. Holy Roman Empire is really fun right now. I mean, it was a really good spawn, but this is this is what you need for the French. You need that little security here around your gold. Get the gold secure. Get onto... Um, you know that 600 gold 900 is the is the sweet spot 900 gives you the men at arms upgrade and it also gives you um uh four to five men at arms in castle age and you can choose spearman lankinet men at arms whatever you need to at that exact moment to deal with your army if it's archers you go men at arms if it's early royal knights you go um, into your um spearman and it's very, very effective right now. Uh, you had the outpost as well as for those raids and those garrison. Um, but that's that's against the French player. That was really, really um, a nice game. So what do we have left? I, I, Delhi is quite easy. They like booming. So you just run 50 men at arms into their base very, very soon. Um, Rus. So... This was a Holy Roman Empire game against the Rus. We did win this game. It was on Altai as well. We can have a look at that. And then a mirror matchup. I think that's the two that I want to um, show you guys. So HRE mirror and then the Rus. If you guys are still watching this far, far into the game, if you are enjoying the content or have comments, please let me know. Please let me know what you guys think, what factions you think counter the Holy Roman Empire, what we can do differently, how the Holy Roman Empire can use this advantage. I want to say advantage, but the fact is it's just map dependent. Uh, certain open maps are so hard to defend uh, because if you don't have the security of the town center or the emergency repairs, it gets very difficult. Uh, so now you can see three on... Uh, first scout comes out, second scout comes out, prelates between the gold and the food right now, house, <laughs> accidental double mineral, but we'll fix that shortly, and again, running forward, uh, we'll have close to the left, so we know the mountain is to the right, so the open space is to the right, that's where we picked up those first two sheep, um, and then our other scout is going to go to the back, and just all the way to the back here, so that you can just pick up all those sheep here on the back and just hop back uh, to uh, all your def to your scouts so town center h up uh, i bind it to two so town center two first scout on three other scout on one just jumping back between them keeping the villager production up so we have three on gold we're going against Rus. we know we need to have some form of deer killing or uh management you can see now uh, these deer are being picked off we can see their house dropping so we pull two villagers and we just start picking off deer just you know they get 10 gold each so we just um do we actually get this one yeah so we actually denied 40 gold there which is great just delays that edge up time a little for him so we drop off our uh, sheep here the sheep mo will move back uh we have all the sheep here at the back we actually came back through the crevice because i know there's always sheep here and we didn't want to run out uh, and now you can see we're going to have eight on food and best arkham chapel placement right here you can't really go for the back you can't really go this side there's no gold or anything to secure so the best go for the deer or go for the berries so right here or right here would be best um, we only have three on the on the gold and the reason for that was that I didn't want to push too much because I was still trying to figure out what does Rus do. Rus goes into uh, here I didn't even have the wood and stuff um, that I used to push with. I assume that you can go for a very aggressive um, what 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 do they call these outposts that they have? You know those uh, wooden fortress. Yeah, wooden fortress. I, I assume you can go for an aggressive wooden fortress early, um, which can be quite a good. Drop a wooden fortress right here and then take the deer right under their base. You can do something like that. I don't know. But we have nine villagers uh, pulled towards this food because... Uh, okay, so 
more going on to wood. This is something I also want to show you guys. Don't nine is too much. If you pull six or five, that's perfect because you need that food. You'll see me go idle here uh, very shortly on the villager training. And if I had some of those villagers on the food, I would have been able to keep that production up. So nine is too much. It gives you a nice little time buffer, but I mean, it's this. It's not needed. Um, three and a half minutes, we'll get ours up. He has three villagers picking off at his. We have nine, so he's going to get quite a surprise when he sees an age up at three minutes. Let's see. Three minutes, 42. I'm calling now. Okay. Three minutes, 50. Three minutes, 50. Three minutes, 50. Calling at three minutes, 50. Bam! Three minutes, 50. That's actually pretty cool. So immediately... Uh, by the way, if you guys build Ark and Chapel, please just, they don't assume this is a drop-off building. Like with the mill, they don't start immediately mining um, gold. You have to micro them by selecting them and then clicking the resource. Uh, even shift-clicking them while the building. So you'll select them, sh build, shift, right-click on the food, and then as soon as the building's done, they go onto the food. I'll force drop-off quickly uh, so I can get some more food. And now you can see we're just chopping, um, transitioning into wood. We want about five on wood and we'll keep four to five on gold and everything else on the food. Um, but the benefit is because it's deer, you'll see these villagers. Um, let's see how much it drops off. This is without wheelbarrow. So they have the inspiration. Our scouts are just running around seeing what's going on. There's the wooden fortress going down. Standard roost play. Um... So we want the wood for a few things. We want a mill possibly. We want, which is inspired, by the way. Um, here would be better, but I don't want to go. Safe, safe is better. Safe is better with the early Roman Empire. So uh, even if you could choose um, to farm food, I would rather have started with the forward deer. So when you are done, you move back to the deer here. What I do if it's not Rus. Uh, against Altai and you get a good deer spawn especially like the ones here you take the deer and you, you, your, your scouts and you push them forward against the Arkin Chapel or even here at the back and you kill them here at the back and that helps so much just playing that a little bit more safe so five and a half minutes here you can see we're almost on 600 gold we want to go for about 900 gold uh, we have the wood coming up the wood is going to build a mill a um, um, lumber camp an extra house and possibly an archery range especially against uh french against uh, rus against a uh, mirror matchup you want to get the archery range up very soon i don't want it here because it's in the influence of the circle which means uh, less space for farms but i get the arch archery range down here so that i can start getting some crossbowmen out and deal with any um, armored units on his side. It's such a huge counter. I've had games where you have like 30, 40 um, men at arms and they just get shredded by like 15 or 20 um, archer uh, crossbowmen. So you have to respect that. Um, on his side, very, very heavy on wood. So I would assume this is for some type of aggressive play because food wise, um, there's deer here. Where is it? Did he go for a boar? Oh, he actually went for a boar. I didn't know that. Didn't even see that. Double archery range right here. Um, so these archery ranges are going to come up. That's why he has the heavy wood. And we have 6 minutes 45. Dropping the... <laughs> dropping the Burgrave Palace at 6 minutes 45. 6 minutes 45. And now going up with 10 villagers. We have uh, 4 more to sustain the food supply. We have a scout. We have our... Um, Credit. And if you do this, if it's a game like this, uh, you'll see with the extra gold that you have, um, very shortly I'll start training prelates. So the prelate will go out to this relic, to this relic here at the back, and we will send forward our scouts so we can actually you can see what's going on. You can see houses going down. And come on, give me those prelates. Villager. Did I actually not go for the prelate? Why not? Usually what I do is I send the prelate at this stage. You take the prelate, you send it out, pick up one of the close relics, the safe relics, just to get that early. There we go. There's the prelate, finally. So, scout at the back of his base. Uh, this is what we can see. We can see the trade house. We can see the wooden fortress. Nothing else going on. Actually didn't know about the war. I did uh, um, scout it out, but I didn't 
scouted out, if you know what I mean. So trying to go for oh this is this is okay, this is interesting. Okay, so um, archers are coming in from the side here in this direction. So I can't scout it out from his base. Uh, early night coming forward, um, and now immediately as soon as that burgrave goes down, I send the prelate back. I actually ran around the fortress or the wood wooden uh, wood line, so I don't have to deal with the archers. But this is early aggression. I mean, this can do quite a bit of damage. But now we have a burgrave palace um, pumping out these men at arms. I macroed the food a little bit bad because I wanted to get some crossbows and stuff out because I was scared of these. You can see how effective this uh, early knight is going to be with these um, early men at arms. Knights beats men at arms. Early knights even beats early men at arms. You can see they're just straight. Uh, we we are losing. But this these three men at arms are just to buy time. Um, now you'll see the men at arms upgraded. And with the upgraded men at arm, um, that's going to do a lot better, take a lot less damage from the archers. And we want to get the heavy mace upgrades. We want to get a blacksmith down. And now we get the outposts down. We've picked up the first relic back here. We're on our way to pick up a relic right here. And then we want to push forward with an army to secure this relic. Okay, so that's that's the the plan so we drop off the uh, outposts because that's actually where <laughs> the relics needs to go we kill the royal knight or the early knight but now we have men at arms and scouts just running them down what i mean these are our men at arms with four armor um they still don't have the heavy mace upgrades so this you can see the single um early knight uh how effective it was at dealing with these men at arms so i did bring them back and we still have men at arms we don't have enough gold to really train anything else um and now you can see the blacksmith coming down and we're just buying time here what we are doing is we want to get two of these relics back get them inside the outposts um and i think we send forward a prelate to go fetch this one i mean that hundred gold in my opinion on this level you know lower lower anything lower than diamond um it's it's really not that bad you can you can get away with a lot more it's not like uh pro level gaming where you need to micro every single thing perfectly um you can see he's not really at a place to go for um castle age because he has to respect and go into these units so he has not enough food we have the units and we have the upgrades so yeah now these extra um um what do you call it prelates are bringing back there we go the prelates picking up the relic second relic getting dropped in the outpost other relic uh, or other prelate is here in the arkham chapel inspiring the villagers inspiring the food you can see those six seven um sheep how effective they are especially when the deer is close by uh, if your deer spawn is far, like for a lot of other maps, you find your deer, um, especially like the pet. The pet is ugly with the deer spawn. It's like all the way to the sides, like far to the sides here. Um, with that, I just drop an Arkham Chapel on top of my berries, and you try and get your wood and your gold inside it. That's that's the safest. And then you invest a little bit more onto your archers, um, onto your uh, woodland, so you can go for um you know some form of second town center or uh, more outposts to get some map control and you want to as soon as possible in this type of scenario this is quite late for me um but i would argue half of these villagers uh, needs to go onto stone um, before 10 minutes so you get the the burgrave palace down at let's say what what was it seven minutes 30 and after that's down you go for um um you go for the stone because as soon as you get the stone you get the uh, relic inside the keep on top of these outposts or sacred sites that's gonna be your your bread and butter so now he's going for nine villagers on his own abbey of the trinity he had to stop unit production to respect the castle age and at this point in stage we just have a very very comfortable lead um where did we, we pick up picked up another relic where did I pick up that relic? Oh, we picked up this relic here. Picked up that relic here. That one is still running back. Holy smokes, that that's that's quite a bit of running. So um, you'll see, we'll drop out, drop more outposts shortly. 
um, so we can drop these relics off. But just making them stand in the base is already a big, big safety. So now we run in the men at arms here. Um, we want to go deal with this army, and you can see it's not it's that we actually got the most upgrades just now. Uh, so we have these extra. You can see the damage difference is just insane. So now he garrisons. We want to create some idle time. We see the um, what do you call it? Uh, Abbey of Trinity coming down. We try and pick off a few villagers, not getting any twenty garrison there. Uh, sending some men at arms here to the back, but he can't garrison, so he just has to run around. And we just send the army to the back because we we push to the back here, and he needs to respect it. But I mean, these men at arms needed to probably just follow these villagers so we could create more idle time. He has the hunt here. Um, a, a thing that I do wrong, just so you guys know in the future. Um, so you're trying to get the, these relics in buildings, right? You can see uh, the prelates literally inspiring with the relic. <laughs> uh, second prelates here, two outposts there, uh, outposts here. So we have 300 gold per minute now uh, with these three relics in. We have the fourth relic here. Uh, fifth relic is all the way to the back, so we're not picking that up yet, right? Um, but we have the sacred site, another extra 100 gold there per minute. And now we have these uh, men at arms at the back here. And he's trying to get his, his units back onto the food, but we have the men at arms. And I would argue in this type of scenario, going for siege engineering and using the forces from both sides or going more uh, men at arms, because you already have the advantage. There's no units. You can see he's probably going to have to go for crossbows like like he's doing right now. Um, but if you had to go for uh, these men at arms plus uh, a few land connects, and maybe one or two rams that can demote someone to be like okay this is too much i'm i'm surrendering and you can see he lasted another 12 minutes so this game gets busy quite quite quickly um i never saw this out so this was was worth pushing into um you know killing these archery rangers because there's one two three four five six seven eight hundred wood um that would be lost by killing this. So it's a, that's a huge loss. That's just as good as killing a town center or a mining camp or so forth. Uh, so we, we run around with the units. He's actually going for a warrior monk to pick up his own relic. So he gets a bit of extra gold uh, from the Abbey of the Trinity when he, he drops that off. Um, but we have four relics. We actually finally dropped off that second relic and now finally we are on the stone you can see with the time difference this stone would have been a lot more and the reason why i'm saying that is um, we want to secure the sacred sites uh, we actually have the prelate capturing the second sacred site here and we have some men at arms just causing a bit more havoc here at the back and that's crossbows, so nine crossbows is going to be very effective uh, against the armies. So you can see now I'm transitioning into archery ranges, so I can go for these archers into men at arms, uh, so I can also deal with his crossbows. Um, I find crossbows actually being very, very effective against the men at arms. And even the French, the Arbitriers, they get that extra five range of, is it five armor or melee armor when they put the shields down? I think so. I had so much armor versus these men at arms, you know. So we push forward with the keep uh, because we have the stone, right? Uh, we still have 400 stone. We finished the. Excuse me. We finished the stone. But I pick up the relic now, and I only started doing this this game. Um, I have not done it a lot, but I didn't know how powerful it was. So I'm like, okay, cool. Let's clear up. Um, the, the room here so we can get some more farms down that's the problem if you build inside your um Arkan chapel you want to build at the other side <laughs> so you don't have to delete buildings you know um so we have quite a bit of units 13 archers 11 men of arms that's going to be very good to deal with these uh, crossbowmen let's see how this fight goes so men of arms crossbowmen are just going to one shot any of these um, men at arms. So the crow, uh, I'm, I'm attack moving the archers and then I'm using the men at arms to just kind of bait the fire so I don't lose my archers, right? So you can see uh, the archers is going to win versus um, the crossbowmen. 
but the men at arms are to soak damage so this is bad this is bad this is not what you want you want the men at arms to focus the uh, knight and now we have archers against crossbowmen so these archers do extra damage it's a uh, light branch infantry they do 12 or 14 damage against those crossbowmen so very effective against the crossbowmen um, so we have two of the sacred sites now uh, we dropped the relic inside the keep and now we are farming some more wood so you can see you just comfortably farming with there farming with there remember to get your upgrades um, transitioning to much more farms and then going for land canets because land canets take less damage overall um, from you know these uh, crossbow heavy crossbowman heavy comps because the crossbowman does 12 damage in nine extra versus heavy but the land connect is a light mean infantry and they do so much damage so yeah it's did i picked another relic up yes i picked up another relic i don't know why oh oh okay now i remember this game <laughs> so we have pump we're pumping out units right now Right, we have gold, we have the blacksmith upgrades coming in, uh, extra ranged or, or, or melee armor, extra melee damage. Uh, very nice army here. We have the archery ranged ranges. So if you press F2 and 7, control 7, um, you can bind all of it to 7. So I press 7 and tap through what I need so I can train my units. So archers now dealing with the. Uh, yeah, archers, men at arms, land canets, dealing with these uh, elite knights and crossbowmen. But these archers are the people that I want to deal with these crossbowmen. Archers versus crossbowmen, archers are going to win. You can see that live. <laughs> We've really, really done good at microing those armies. But you can see the units just rolling in now. So we're creeping the keeps, keep creeping. Um, we keep on keeping the creeps or creeping up the, with the keeps so we can get these keeps inside his base. I would assume a more aggressive one uh, right there would have been better, but I didn't know what he had. So you can see now he's going for um, a double siege workshop. He has quite a bit of wood so he can afford it. He has quite a bit of gold. So now there's a, a little, uh, what do you call it, town center, second town center right here and the keep goes down and this is something i want to show you guys if you garrison um units inside the keep archer archer units inside the keep they do a bit more damage as far as i know than villagers i think so i can't remember but uh he needs to get those trebuchets out you can see the trebuchets double trebuchet now in queue um is it yeah, counterweight tributaries. Okay, so now we have the keep, we have the relic inside the keep. And if I had to replay this game, I would have kept the units that I have and gone for a um what do you call the next landmark? That oh, I'm bad with the landmarks today, guys. I'm so sorry. I would actually go with the Alsback Palace. Alsback Palace um uh, in this type of scenario. Now we actually eventually start seeing these archery ranges here at the back, you can't use them because the units are cut off basically with the two uh, keeps. And we are just trying to get more stone in. You can see we are uh, farming stone here at the back. Villagers went idle. And uh, this is quite big. So he has knights, upgraded knights, not early knights anymore. Um, and the double counterweight trebuchet comes in. But you have to... Okay, so I don't know if this is big brain or if this is just an exploit please tell me but this is this is quite quite sus i'll show you guys guys so he starts sieging down the keep right i'm like okay cool i need to get emergency repairs so i use villagers i build houses i buy my wood so i have enough to build houses and i'm building this chain of blueprints <laughs> literally linking up the orange influence circle right getting it onto the keep getting the keep back to the base and now as soon as it gets into the base when i get it right when i get it right when i get it right i get emergency repairs and immediately i get emergency repairs on the keep i mean this keep was gonna go down it has it has the extra um up attacks and stuff but it was it, it kept <laughs> 
<laughs> it gets emergency repairs and all I have is a bunch of blueprints. Oh, this is insane. I love this game. So now we're going in, uh, so the archers are going to get decimated by the mangonels. He actually has quite a bit of siege. And we are uh, archer heavy. We are trying to deal with um, you know, 33 archers just getting decimated by the mangonels. But we want to get villagers, get kills here and there, wherever we can. And see he's trying to pull some villagers to get some repairs off. But we have... Uh, you know, the men at arms and the stuff at the back trying to kill. And there the first keep goes down. We have the relic here in the front. We have a prelate somewhere here in the middle of the fight. Um, right here, still staying alive out of fire from the town center, surprisingly. But now the archers won't really do anything against the, the trebuchet. So uh, we pull the units back. Now the keep is here. We have emergency repairs again on the keep. They are global so it's like a global cooldown and i need to get the relic i hope i get it soon but yeah we have uh, walls down we still only have three archery ranges one burger palace and keeps and i go for a base inside his base i'm like okay cool i have um six or eight villagers here and let me just take those villagers and build barracks is right here because i'm running out of men at arms because of this running distance um so i can just go for another death push and now we actually get another emergency repair up you want to do it early you don't want to wait until it's late if you can't push it immediately because getting the early uh the the repair up and then um waiting for it to come down or or reset you'll get that before it's finished you'll get that repair up again so we've pushed forward with the men of arms and archer comp again, trying to get on top of those um, uh, counterweight trebuchets, buying a bit of time so they stop attacking so we can get up to the emergency repair timer. Um, and with that repair, we have bought us enough time to get these men of arms and, and, and barracks on the front line so we can actually train those units immediately. So you can see how far he had to back off with these counterweight trebuchets because we were um, basically, they call it a trash army because we have infinite food on the farms, we have infinite gold. Uh, we are farming gold, you can see we are farming stone, we are farming wood, not, actually not farming gold at all. We actually have 600 gold per minute from relics alone. Um, that's what it seems like, I guess. Um, and now, you know, very, very nice army starting to get built up here. Um, those villagers just built one, two, three, four, five, five barracks, six barracks. So we're going metal arms, land connects. And if you press shift, W, E, shift, uh, whatever, you can train four or five units at a time. If it doesn't work, please tell me how you activate that setting. I need to show my girlfriend how to do that because I don't know how to change the setting. But uh, yeah, now he has two counterweight trebuchets. We've upset his economy quite a bit. You can see he has to expand to farms quite far away. Um, struggling to, to get really too much. But we have our units. We actually get the... Um, that's, that's why you need to know your keybinds. I spread the units with C to go to a, a staggered formation. And those mangonel shots only hit one or two units instead of all of them. So now the, the men at arms are going to do very well because they have high numbers against these knights. Archers are then going to move in to deal with these crossbowmen. And now we are basically running through his base and our group armies by taking maybe a few like this and sending them onto the mangonels like this. So you can shift click the mangonel like this so you can actually you'll see them target down these mangonels. Um, over any other thing and now the archers are on top of his army men at arms on top of his army and good games get, get gets called but yeah i think the little i think this is an exploit personally i think it's an exploit to build a a, a train like this i think they might change that i i i wouldn't be surprised if they do that the building needs to get finished i don't know how they would basically say the building needs to be finished for the um, emergency repair to be active because otherwise what's the point right uh so that's something that probably needs to happen but uh that that single emergency repair play i think uh gave me the time i needed to to go into you know that repair and really pretty well i think he was a thousand three hundred rating so he's a conqueror player um that uh, that lost there 
and I asked him afterwards, you know, what what did you think about the game and was it quite difficult? And he said he do, he doesn't know how to win it. So we discussed it a bit um, as the risk, what he could do and what he can't do and what would be more effective. But you can see um, going with the Burgraf Palace, uh, it's a lot better than the Reginets in my opinion because you still get the gold anyway. You still get the lead because they don't have the gold, so you get the 500 gold. But that extra 100 gold doesn't mean that much because you get the Burgraf Palace. You don't have to spend five, six, or a thousand wood to build um, units. So I think Burgraf is going to get nerfed or starting wood or something like that. I hope that they just don't nerf it too much. So now we're going orange. Uh, I actually like blue more, but orange Holy Roman Empire again. Hehekos. <laughs> So he's a uh, British player from the UK as far as I know. Two on to gold. Uh, double scout start opening for him as well. We have a double scout as well. You can see we are on the right. So I'm scouting across on Altai onto the left into his side. So we can try and pick up these stray sheep in his front of his base like we're doing. And then uh, the other scout is going to run around the back and then all the way down to the side and pick up all the sheeps at the back. Uh, one of the two needs to come back. Usually I would send this one back first around here. Um, you can see he went onto the gold a little bit earlier than I did, but only with two, so six and two. I would argue three and four is a better start um, because you get your buildings up a little bit sooner. Um, you see the house in the, the lumber camp or, or mining camp is there but yeah i don't want to send the prelate all the way over here um to inspire he got a bit a bit better spawn for me it's quite far i mean uh the only other gold that i have is even more forward so very very uh, unsafe gold I, i'm actually quite surprised uh so relics are favorable all th three of them actually um this one is kind of neutral, but this one is very close to me. This is more uh, relic for him, uh, close to me. So I would say relics are kind of in my favor right now. Um, so again, going up to four, five on two gold. Um, I don't mind over macroing gold. You can see I didn't want to run all the way to here. So I just ran until I'm in close enough. I inspire the villagers and then I send him back. So we have five on food, five on gold, and then everything else is going to go on food for quite a long time. Um, he has eight and three. Um, so his macro is a lot better than mine. I would argue it's a lot better. And then the best place for this to go would be probably Arkham Chapel right on top of the deer. We are going to probably drop our Arkham Chapel right on top of the deer. We see the sheep coming across i actually typed in chat and told him yeah i could have garrisoned but i don't want to i didn't want to be that guy this game it's a mirror matchup let's keep it fair you know for the sake of diplomacy um a little stray sheep that i missed here but yeah he has quite a bit of sheep it would have been a nice game those five extra sheep you know but now we drop our ark in chapel he goes with uh five villagers and some idle villagers he didn't bring back sheep fast enough where is his second scout Let's quickly have a look. First scout's right here. Second scout right here. You need to bring back your food, buddy. So he's picking off the sheep. A little of idle time there um, on his side that I only see right now. We have our villagers on food. Not making the same mistake to take all of the villagers. So six is a good number. So if you go for, um, let's say, three and six, you go up to eight, you get the landmark down. Um, or while you getting those six up you'll probably reach eight uh, by the time you start with the with the chapel but you can see now i'm using the scout to push in the deer and while they're close then i kill them because then i don't have to push these deer out um, to, or, or have them too far and the food is very safe right so that's the one scout second scout's going to be uh, on his base uh, Rich, the, he's, his Argon Chapel goes up, still three on gold, and now he has um, a nice 11 on food. I, I pushed the deer away, you can see here. Um, I pushed the deer away so he doesn't, <laughs> he doesn't kill the deer right underneath this thing. You can see he's going to scare this one. Runs extremely far. I don't know. Look at that. 
I've never seen that. <laughs> I've never seen that. This deer is out of question. <laughs> Sorry, that was that was quite funny. I've never seen a deer sprint like that. Probably the biggest fright he got in his life. Um, you know, lone lone crazy deer survived. He he made a sprint for his life. He made it. He made it, guys. So now we have uh, five on gold. I always use my gold villagers to build the uh, um, extra houses, and now you can see. We have 10 on food. I think that's that's like the sweet spot for me. I think 10 on food, uh, 5 on gold, that's with the influence of the Arkham Chapel. That's perfect because that you get those inspiration buffs, right? And on top of that, your prelate, um, your prelate um, is here to help if you get scout raided or anything like that. If it was against French or English, obviously it would have been different. But you can see, um, you know, it's very similar he's on 15 no no 15 he's not on 15 food he's on 8 uh 12 12 on food two on wood three on yeah, there's another deer there so uh quite yeah so let's say 12 on food 12 on food two on two on wood 13 on food two on wood yeah. four on gold so you can see now the gold's coming up there on his side um but he has a little bit better micro you can see the the differences up to castle edge is better he'll reach it more consistently but personally i like having a bit more food and i like having um the early gold as soon as i reach the gold i need i can always pull them back and do other things um so that i don't have to worry about gold if i get raided or something like that right i think that like i said before the sweet spot is 900 um if you get 900 gold that's that's like perfect for me um i just wanted to drop off more food villagers so you can see we're also on 15 food now same as him um but he'll actually i think start this sooner um than me oh actually same time so there the drop off comes or oh, he finishes he runs out of food no, there's just too many villagers. Um, so now he goes for his Burgrave Palace. We go for a Burgrave Palace. Uh, we are using nine villagers. He is using four villagers. I think nine is better <laughs> because you want to get that Castle Age um, intimidation as soon as possible. You can see I transition now onto the wood at the back. And I'll send more onto sheep. Um, these villagers will come back onto food very shortly but we have food we have gold and we want to get that men at arm upgrade and we want to get our prelates out so single prelate now um no prelates in queue yet if you have 900 gold you can always send start training those prelates without struggling to get your men at arm upgrade um but now we get the upgrade you can see here he pulled more villagers now five on the rich uh Burgrave palace five on gold nice amount under um the arkin chapel for food and you know still using the arkin as a drop off which is cool i just didn't have any safer woodline so i had to go for the lumber camp at the back and now you can see the men at arms are coming out one two three plus a uh, early men at arms upgrade that's perfect and the first prelate coming out second prelate's gonna get done soon we're just waiting for the gold and we dropped our other prelate out as well so prelate one right here prelate two right here and we're going for this relic we're going for this relic and then we can contest on this one now he gets the the Burgrave palace out um See, he doesn't have the... So he's on gold, but he doesn't have insane amount of gold. So he only gets two out. You see what I mean, right? So pick up, we picked up two relics, right? By going heavy on the gold first. Because we have the gold. We transitioned into food, right? He has the scout. We, we did everything else the same, right? Um, he has a mill. I have a mill. Uh, we don't have any upgrades we're going for stone now but we have the scout that's going to get dropped off here and now we have six men at arms now where is he rallied to let's just let's just see where he's rallied to so he's rallied to this relic at the back but he did send forward two men at arms right here so he only only got two men at arms out and he still had, oh he did actually get the upgrade so yeah now that's him picking up the first relic right there 
And the second relic right here is also quite safe. Um, but yeah, we have the men at arms right here, keybind four. Um, there we go, town center keybind two. And you can see now I am struggling a little bit with the wood, so I dropped the relic off. I just you click on it, you e drop it off, and I don't have anything to put it in. So I just have the safe um, outposts here, dropping the outposts now, so I can start building uh, or get that gold. Um, he also doesn't have. Oh, he has an outpost here at the back. Um, so that's four or five minute arms. We are safe right here, uh, picking up the third relic. And for argument's sake, this prelate could have come out and picked up this relic, relic, so then he would have um, had more relics, right? So now he's trying to get this prelate, but we have very heavy men at arms. I'm just going to speed this up a little bit. So the men at arms push forward. We have uh, land connect in there as well, and the Burgraf Palace, you can see, we are slowly starting to train up crossbowmen. We have three. Um, outposts right now and we actually find out the prelate picking up the second relic and we kill him so now we have that relic secured and we have 15 men of arms you know and this is is this upgraded versus upgraded let's just have a look so this is normal 12 4 4 versus 12 plus 2 he actually got the plus 2 upgrade first and then the mercy so he's men of arms are actually more upgraded than mine um, we actually don't have the plus two upgrade. Uh, you can see right here the two-handed weapon. So he's been around for do a little bit more damage, but we, we get a bit of a surround. We cause some idle time, and we have our prelate right here to snipe this little relic out. Um, so he actually transitioned into horseman um, with the stable right here, and we actually beat the fight just because of the sheer numbers that we have. And now he has to fall back. He has to invest more food into mineral arms. You can see um, training one or two out there. Um, but this, uh, this town center is going to shred these mineral arms. You won't do anything by keeping this army here. So all I'm trying to do is creating idle time, getting the villager up, getting time so I can, you know, stabilize my economy and my upgrades at the back. Burgraf Palace. And you can see as soon as I get raided, um, let's just have a look at this raid. So I get raided, I see the notification, immediately rally to the base and rally spearmen. So I just garrison, maybe lose one or two villagers, but now I have five spearmen in a question of, of 10 seconds and they will be able to deal. So that's so, so, so effective um, fighting like that. And at the same time, those men at arms were just doing damage the whole time. Um, I would have argued that I would have pulled this um, men at arms back, back to the side here um right here to you know cause him to have to focus on that just giving me a bit more time so he sends forward a few men at arms here i have spearmen trying to deal with it but i sent uh, some um what do you call it men at arms and land connects forward i have some spearmen so these raids are good these raids found me out quite uh, vulnerable i must say the fact that he had these armies in the back and my army just basically died so very effective second trade for him um, transitioning into farms, we still have a prelate standing here with the fourth relic. We know he has one relic uh, inside these outposts, um, but we are going again for the stone. And basically, what I tried to say with a mirror matchup is, Burgrave, in my opinion, is the best option because you're not going to equal that with going for the Regnitz um, because the amount is just not the same. So we go for archery ranges now. So we can get those crossbowmen, because the crossbowmen will counter his men at arms. He can't really go knights because we do extra damage with the men at arms against the knights. So you have to go crossbowmen. It's it's the next big thing. We have spearmen to defend our base quite a bit, and all of this was strained by a single Burgraf Palace. So personally, I think the Burgraf Palace might get nerfed from 400% to 200% maybe, if that's the case. I don't know. I would argue that it's it's maybe better going for the extra gold um, with the other landmark because then the effectiveness of the Burgraf Palace gets lost because pumping out units, that's what makes this so effective. It didn't work before because the gold advantage was just ridiculous. Um, but now the fact that 
and you're pumping out the, uh, the units at the speed of basically five barracks. Um, that's, it's not the fact that those barracks, those, those um, units are coming out that quick. It's the fact that you can, you can respond to any problems really, really quickly. Imagine you have 10 units and suddenly you need five spearmen and five seconds later you have five spearmen. That's where the power of the Burgrave Palace lies. Um, so I think that's the reason why everything is so effective with the Burgrave Palace. And, you know, we have, we have wood, we have inspiration going on, we have our uh, prelates inside our armies. Um, you can also, also when you get castle age, like don't sit on this much wood, please do drop down your uh, monastery. Please do drop down a second town center so you can just have that stabilization of the economy. Um, 50 villagers at 20 minutes is very, very low, guys. Like compared to other factions, that's very, very low. Uh, big Red coming in right here. He has 19 men at arms. Uh, still no blacksmith upgrades. We are getting some right now. He is still not getting any blacksmith upgrades. Okay, so cool. We'll have that extra um, damage now. But we also have 15 villagers. And 15 villagers plus a relic coming forward means a keep going down. Keep going down. So I'm getting map control on the sacred side. The same prelate's going to drop off the uh, relic and after the relic he's going to capture the sacred side secure more gold secure more map you can see um, getting killed here by the wolf i didn't see this but we're getting the sacred side right here and now we have this fight coming in crossbowman is going to do most of the damage right here uh let me just slow this down so you can see we lose all our men at arms because they get, take extra damage from the enemy men at arms, right? Um, but now we just fall back to the keep and the keep is just going to do insane amounts of damage plus these crossbowmen. So now we have uh, 11 crossbowmen and you can see we are pumping out a bit more spearmen just in case we get raided. It's veteran spearmen so we have to respect them. Um, training up more farms, really nice farm uh, placement here got a lot of free space uh, the two houses are straight but we'll we'll fix that eventually um, and now we we're starting to see the run around starting to happen with the keep so we see these units coming around the side so we start moving our spearmen to the back um, to respect that we have spearmen here on the side if he comes for a run around behind and we also walled off this side so we, we kind of securing our position fortifying the ground and we also got spring old emplacements on all of these uh, outposts so anything that's going to come in here is just going to get decimated we have the spring olds plus um what do you call it the uh, really emplacements. so yeah that that's just insane so now these land canets are coming in. The land canets are going to really, really be effective against mass men at arms. Man, the men at arms won't do extra damage. Um, they only will do uh, 14 damage. They won't do double damage against the, or extra damage against the land canets. So the land canets inside your men at arms are really, really effective. And you can see the second prelate bringing uh, the second relic now forward. So we can drop it into the second keep. And uh, after that, we'll just use our villagers and start um, going for more stone. And these relics, or uh, these keeps, are vulnerable because they don't get the um, emergency repair. So just take note of that. It, we actually split our army here because we don't want to send everything forward. Uh, we do see the runaround starting to happen, so immediately after that we'll start rallying to the back. Um, so we can just deal with these armies happening at the back here. We'll see that very shortly. You can see sending back a bit of army and sending forward a bit of army. Just so we, we can control where those units are coming from. Look at this little runaround. That's actually sneaky. You know, I don't know how these trees work, but in my opinion, that that to me looks closed. So, not sure how these ridges work. I would love if it was just a little bit more smoother, because, I mean, he ran through the two trees. I don't, I don't understand that. Okay. Um, okay, cool. So, we have forward armies, um, still a single archery range and a single burger palace. We have the men at arms and the units dealing with the raid that came in. Actually has um there's another wall here just to close off so you guys can see 
But this is cool. This is the double keep to get uh, map control. We'll send the prelate to go capture the sacred site. But now these men at arms are upgraded with extra armor, extra ranged armor. And we're kind of baiting with the crossbows so we can fight into the keep. And you can see we're pushing forward with the villagers again, pushing down another keep. And then as soon as this keep is down, we'll use the prelate, take a relic and push it forward. So you creep pushing with um, the prelate and the relics. And I would argue maybe um, three or four um, prelates inside this army would just be disgusting. Um, I would argue that it's worth getting a monastery down with this army comp and just supplementing these armies with um, a few prelates. That that would make a big difference in just getting some kills done. So you can see these men at arms just slashing it out right here. The land canets are going to do all the damage here. Three land canets there and some crossbowmen. And now we have a keep again. Uh, emergency repair coming through. We did the little... <laughs> We did the... Uh, I don't know what to call this, guys. Like, I just built the houses all the way to the to the base with the blueprints. So that because of the blueprints there, they work the same as with um, China when they push with the Barbican of the Sun, right? When they push with the Barbican of the Sun and you have blueprints, they can't put it down, right? Because there's like a, a percentage of health that's on that and it uses resources, right? So I get it. It makes sense. But because of that, it means that you can do this where you basically just link up your keeps and now you have a keep inside the enemy base that doesn't cost stone to repair that has emergency repairs and that can withstand literally two trebuchets for a good four or five minutes what more do you need i mean that's like the strongest keep in the game and if you go for a um that um palace you know if you go for this palace this palace has seven and a half thousand uh, thousand health, the Ausback Palace, and it's a keep. And if you put a relic inside that thing, it's just insane. And then you get the um, cannon emplacements, so you can't deal with bombards. So bombards, uh, the, the keep outranges bombards, so the bombards can't do anything. Uh, you have crossbowmen, you have men-at-arms, you can go into springles, you can go into your own trebuchets to deal with the enemy. But there's not much, in my opinion, that you can do versus a relic keep push because if you push into this they just fall back they pop the emergency repair and you can see now um so this is the keeps health this is the damage and everything drop the relic in 25 there extra um fire resistance extra ranged uh extra range and extra range damage and um emergency repairs <laughs> So yeah, still, still no other um, um, military production. Literally a single Burgraf Palace and a single archery range. Uh, you can see now we're getting the, the Vatness, which increases the bonus buff from 40 to 50 percent. You get your mill upgrades. Where is my mill? There's my mill. You get the horticulture in the second one. So this can go up to about 95% or 90%. Now you can see the springles just dealing with the, um, what do you call it? With the trebuchets and pulling the, arm, the units in emergency repair and pushing out the army again. That's that's it, guys. That's all you need to do with Holy Roman Empire against mirror matchups. So you push for a keep first, and you uh, get your macro right so you can train and uh, have a number advantage early on, and you counter it with crossbowmen. You can see on his side there's no crossbowmen, it's mangonels. But, you know, because of the land canets in this army, you'll just shred these men of arms very, very effectively on close range. You have extra counter with the crossbowmen and um you know double siege with the emergency repairs this just yeah it's a death push just like ozzy Jongo said but thank you very much guys uh, please let me know what you guys think of all the different games uh what factions you think counter this or how do you think this is best countered um i lost the game against abyssid dynasty because of the camels and they do extra actually quite a bit of damage i would argue that's quite a difficult one to do this um, especially because they go into two or three town centers, you can't keep up with the villager production, especially when you make units. So I would argue uh, against the Abyssal Dynasty to go into maybe um, Fast Imperial. 
I actually think that's a play um, against them because if you start pumping out units, um, Imperial Age at 12 minutes, you know, that can uh, that can actually really, really be effective. But yeah, thank you very much for watching, guys. Please let me know and uh, I'll catch you guys in the next videos. Hope this one gets...